Secretary, please read. Senate Concurrent Resolution 108 by Senator Monning relative to Rare Disease Day. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Members, Assembly amendments to Senate Concurrent Resolution 108, Rare Disease Day recognition, simply add co-authors. I respectfully ask for your aye vote on concurrence. Members, debate or discussion on this item? Debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen. Anderson. Aye. I. Bates. I. Bell. I. Berryhill. I. Block. I. Canella. I. De Leon. I. Fuller. I. Gaines. Gal I. Galjani. I. Glazer. Hall. I. Hancock. I. Hernandez. Hertzberg. I. Hill. I. Wisso. I. Huff. I. Jackson. I. Lada. I. Leno. I. Leva. I. Lou. I. McGuire. I. Mendoza. I. Mitchell. I. Monning. I. Morlock. I. Morrell. I. Wynn. I. Nilsson. I. Pan. Pavley. I. Roth. I. Runner. Stone. I. Vidak. Wykowski. I. Wolk. Wolk I. Please call the absent members. Allen. I. Glazer. I. Hernandez. Pan. I. Runner. Vidak. I. 37. No zero. The assembly amendments are concurred in. Members, we're moving on to Senate third reading, beginning with file item 16. Senator Hertzberg, file item 16. Pass on file. File item 17, Senator Mendoza, pass on file. File item 18, Senator Mitchell. Senator Mitchell, pass on file. File item 19, Senator Roth, pass on file. File item 21, Senator Mendoza, pass on file. File item 22, Senator Gaines, pass on file. File item 23, Senator Wolk, pass on file. File item 24, Senator Wykowski, pass on file. File item 25, Senator Hernandez, on this desk. File item 26, Senator Leva. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 1015 by Senator Leva, an act relating to domestic work employees. Senator Leva. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, members. SB 1015 is a 2016 Domestic Worker Bill of Rights, which builds upon the great success of AB 241, which was signed into law in 2013. As you are aware, AB 241 finally granted overtime protections to California's privately hired domestic workers. SB 1015 simply makes those overtime protections permanent, since the provisions of the 2013 bill are set to sunset on January 1st of 2017. California is blessed to have over 300,000 hardworking domestic workers, many of whom are here today, that work as housekeepers, nannies, and caregivers in homes across the state. Thousands of families in California depend on their hard work to care for their loved ones and even allow them the ability to keep a job of their own. All families, including those of domestic workers, deserve to live with dignity. To that end, it certainly makes no sense to take away overtime protections from hardworking Californians that depend on this pay to make ends meet and provide for their families. So I would just end by saying everyone should be, should be treated with dignity and to remember that they are caring for our most valued and loved members of our family. So let's make sure that they can take care of their families and show them that we value all work. Members, I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Members, debate or discussion on this item. Senator DeLeon. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President and colleagues. I too uh, rise in support of Senate Bill 1015. By removing the extension, it is simply the right thing to do and simply put, it is a no-brainer. We have more than 300,000 domestic workers throughout the state of California. As the Senator had just mentioned a few moments ago, they are entrusted every single day to do the very important work, the hard work of taking care of the household and in many instances actually taking care of the most vulnerable in the household, the children. 
the children of the very wealthy and elite of the great state of California. Now, I would know this specifically because my mother was a domestic worker cleaning the homes in the rich, wealthy enclaves of the homes that overlook the Pacific Ocean in La Jolla, as well as Coronado and elsewhere. So let's give these women primarily some dignity and respect. Again, this is a no-brainer by making this extension. With that, I respectfully ask for an I vote. Members, additional debate or discussion on this item? Senator Leva, would you like to close? Members, I just respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. Anderson? No. Bates? No. Bell? Aye. Berryhill? Block? Aye. Canella? No. De Leon? Aye. Fuller? No. Gaines? Galjoni? Aye. Glazer? Aye. Hall? Aye. Hancock? Aye. Hernandez? Hertzberg? Aye. Hill? Aye. Hueso? Aye. Huff? No. Jackson? Aye. Lada? Aye. Leno? Aye. Leva? Aye. Lou? McGuire? Aye. Mendoza? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. Monning? Aye. Morlock? No. Morrell? Wynn? Nielsen? No. Pan? Aye. Pavley? Aye. Roth? Aye. Runner? Stone? No. Vidak? Wykowski? Aye. Walk. Walk aye. Please call the absent members. Barry Hill, no. Gaines, no. Hernandez, Lou, aye. Morrell, Wynn, Runner, Vidak. Ice 25, nose 10, the measure passes. Moving on to file item 27. Pass on file. File item 28, Senator Wesso. File item 29, Senator Bates. Secretary, please read. Senate Joint Resolution 23 by Senator Bates relative to the Interim Consolidated Storage Act of 2016. Senator Bates. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, Senate Joint Resolution 23 urges Congress to pass the Interim Consolidated Storage Act of 2016, House Resolution 4745. For decades, the federal government has promised to move the new nation's nuclear waste into safe, manageable storage, but has failed to act. Since 1998, utilities companies have been compensated for continuing to store nuclear waste and accept liability. However, a November 2013 U.S. Court of Appeals decision eliminated the fee designed to finance used fuel storage. The failure of action has created untenable situations for communities across the country. The waste from the closed San Onofre nuclear plant, for example, sits near an active fault line adjacent to the heavily trafficked Interstate 5 and the Pacific Ocean and is sandwiched between densely populated Orange and San Diego counties. This is just one example out of the 120 nationwide. A 2011 report from the Blue Ribbon Commission on America's Nuclear Future recommended that the Department of Energy consolidate the interim storage of nuclear waste into regional sites that would be stronger, safer, more secure, more manageable, and more economically viable than the current system. The Interim Consolidated Storage Act provides a creative solution to a critical need. The legislation would pair a region that is volunteering to host an interim waste storage facility with communities around the country that have nuclear waste demanding a better storage solution. This joint resolution encourages needed action by the federal government to pass H.R. 4745. It is imperative for California to speak with one voice in asking Congress to address the urgent issue of interim nuclear storage. I ask that you join me in support of this bipartisan legislation that would make California communities safer. I urge your I vote. Members, debate or discussion on this item? Debate or discussion? Amen. Seeing and hearing none, is there objection to using our unanimous roll call? Seeing and hearing none, ice 37, no zero, the resolution is adopted. Moving on to file item 30, pass on file. file I oh, she's absent. Sorry, Senator Runner's absent. Uh, file item 31, Senator Galgiani, Secretary, please read. Senate Concurrent Resolution 132 by Senator Galgiani relative to peace officers. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. SCR 132 designates Monday, May 2nd as California Peace Officers Memorial Day 
in commemoration of those noble officers who have tragically sacrificed their lives in the line of duty. The selflessness of California peace officers is unparalleled. These brave men and women work local, loyally on behalf of all Californians, regardless of the peril or hazard to themselves. Through the enforcement of our laws, these same officers have safeguarded the lives and property of the citizens of California and have given their full measure to ensure our right to be free from crime and violence. Though we are indebted to our California peace officers every day, for the past 40 years, Californians across the state express appreciation of the sacrifice and dedication to those individuals who gave their lives for our safety on Peace Officers Memorial Day. This year, we recognize four officers who lost their lives in the line of duty. They are Officer Michael Johnson of the San Jose Police Department, end of watch, March 24th, 2015. Officer David Nelson, Bakersfield Police Department, end of watch, June 26, 2015. Sergeant Scott Lunder, Hayward Police Department, end of watch, July 22nd, 2015. Officer Bryce Haynes, San Bernardino Police Department, end of watch, November 5th, 2015. In addition, one officer who was killed in defense of their communities in prior years, but was not yet enrolled, Officer William Wagner, Long Beach Police Department, end of watch, December 18th, 1954. We are deeply saddened by the loss of these exceptional officers, but remain honored and humbled by their courageousness and willingness to defend our great state. I thank all of my colleagues that have joined as co-authors on SCR 132. Your support of this measure sends a clear message of respect and admiration to California peace officers past and present. SCR 132 affords us an opportunity to remember those individuals who gave their lives for our safety and for us to express our gratitude to those who continue to dedicate themselves to making California a safer place to live and raise our families. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Members, the better discussion on this item. The better discussion. Seeing and hearing none. Is there objection to using our unanimous roll call? Seeing and hearing none, ayes 37, no zero. The resolution is adopted. Moving on to file item 32, Senator Bell. Senator Bell? Pass on file. File item 33, Senator Huff, pass on file. File item 34, Senator Monning, pass on file. File item 35, Senator Wolk, pass on file. File item 30, 37, um, Senator Hertzberg. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 1476, hey, the Committee on Governance and Finance and Act linked to Taxation. This issue. Senator Hertzberg. Thank you kindly, Mr. President. Um, each of us every year when we fill out our tax returns, we will note on our 540 form that there's a series of tax checkoffs, voluntary tax checkoffs that each of us can make voluntary contributions, whether it's to the Firefighters Memorial Fund or the Breast Cancer Research Fund or school supplies for homeless children. We authorized these since 1982 in the California legislature, and we've added on a number of them. Well, last year there was a story in a respected outlet and it turned out, we didn't know, that with respect to a number of these funds, where taxpayers say and have an expectation that they're going to send the money and it's going to go immediately to pay for school kids, school supplies, or whatever it is, that one, sometimes it takes years for the money to get there. Two, in some instances, the money never went there and went back to the general fund. As they say in Yiddish, a lochenkop, a hole in your head. This is crazy. So our committee, Senator Morlock was there in Los Angeles, held a hearing, and we drilled into these ones that didn't actually make the payments to try to figure out how to fix it. This measure is the fix. It fixes it in a couple of respects. One, it aligns interests to make sure that uh, how much money is in the bank for each of these things is posted online and where the money is spent so that the interest groups that need the money know if the money is in the bank. Two. 
One of the great problems we had is that this was a budget item. So if somebody wrote a check in June and it was after the budget, it might be two years before the money went because it had to be a, a budget process. We moved to a continuing appro appropriation process. We continued the rate at $250,000 per contribution, and we made these a voluntary tax contribution so that it does not revert to the general fund. We think this is a fix. We think it's common sense, raging common sense, as I like to call it. Ask for your support of this measure. Members, the better discussion on this item. The better discussion. Seeing and hearing none, is there objection to using a unanimous roll call? Seeing and hearing none, ice 37, no, zero. The measure passes. Moving on to file item 38, Senator Wynn. Pass on file. File item 39, Senator Gelgiani, not at her desk. File item 40, Senator Morrell. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 1136 by Senator Morrell, an act linked to fire prevention. Senator Morrell. Thank you, Mr. President. Members, uh, good morning. SB 1136 is a measure which will ensure that this legislature and our constituents adequately understand how their SRA fire prevention fees are being spent. The reports uh, currently provided by CAL FIRE are not quite detailed enough for a clear understanding of um, our expenditures. Receiving one satisfactory report will prevent any future misgivings about SRA fees. The legislature should receive uh, full disclosure of the expenditures we authorize here. In addition, the existing reporting requirements sunsets next January. This bill will extend the sunset date to uh, January of 2021. This is essential for our constituents who have been asking and wanting to know where and how their money is being spent. So I want to thank you for listening and uh, respectfully ask for your Nielsen. aye vote. Oh, thank you. Members, debate or discussion on this item? No. Senator Nielsen? Thank you. Members, debate or discussion on this item? Is there an objection to using a unanimous roll call? Seeing and hearing none, ayes 37, no zero, the measure passes. Moving on to file item 41, Senator Canella, Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 1165 by Senator Canella, an act relating to? Professions and vocations. Professions and vocations. Senator Canella. All right, thank you, Mr. President. SB 1165 is a code cleanup and update bill for the Board of Professional Engineers, Land Surveyors, and Geologists. Generally speaking, it clarifies the requirements of applicants for licensure or certification in these fields. This bill is sponsored by the board, carries no opposition, and has, had, has received unanimous bipartisan support. I respectfully ask for an I vote. Members, the better discussion on this item. The better discussion. Seeing and hearing none, is there objection to using a unanimous roll call? Seeing and hearing none, ayes 37, no zero, the measure passes. Senator Walk, for what purpose do you rise? Purposes of introduction. Without objection. Uh, Mr. Speaker and members, it's Mr. Uh, Pro Tem and members, it's my, Mr. President and members, I ought to get this straight. Pro it's my okay. pleasure to introduce in the gallery uh, students from Casa Grande High School in Petaluma. They are all seniors in economics and government. They're here to observe what we're doing and they're joined by their seven teachers and student teacher. Please join me in welcoming them. Welcome. <laughs> Members, back on the daily file, file item 42, Senator Morrell. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 1209 by Senator Morrell, an act relating to contractors. Senator Morrell. Thank you, Mr. President and Ben Allen and members. Um, okay, SB 1209 is an easy uh, consumer protection bill that uh, closes a loophole in the law. Currently, the Contractor State License Board requires contractors to publicly disclose any citation they have received within the past five years. However, if a contractor obtains a new license, the citation does not follow. SB uh, 1209 just states that the responsible contractor will have to disclose the citation on any other license they obtain. This bill has been narrowly tailored to apply only to the responsible contractor. The bad actors, as we like to call them, make the market much more difficult uh, for the good guys and gals. SB 1209 passed out of the committee with unanimous support. I respectfully ask for your eye vote. Thank you. Members, the better discussion on this item. The better discussion, seeing and hearing none. Is there objection to using our unanimous roll call? Seeing and hearing none, ayes 37, no zero. The measure passes. Moving on to file item 43, Senator Allen. Pass on file. File item 44, Senator McGuire. Pass on file. File item 45, Senator Leno. Pass on file. File item 
File item 46, Senator Bates. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 1436 by Senator Bates, an act relating to open meetings. Senator Bates. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, members. Uh, I am certainly pleased to present to you Senate Bill 1436. It simply requires legislative bodies of local agencies prior to taking a final action on local agency executive compensation to report orally a summary of a recommendation for the final action. Local agency executives, such as agency CEOs and city managers, are offered benefits including health care coverage and pensions in amounts that can have a significant long-term impact on the budget, and these type benefits deserve particular scrutiny by the public. The intent of the Brown Act is for public bodies' actions to be taken openly and that their deliberations be conducted openly. This measure will facilitate proper consideration and deliberation on matters of local agency executive comp compensation and thereby furthers the intent of the law. The measure is supported by the California Newspaper Publishers Association and Californians Aware. The bill has no known opposition, has received no no votes, so I respectfully ask for your I vote. Members, the better discussion on this item. The better discussion. Seeing and hearing none, is there objection to using a unanimous roll call? Seeing and hearing none, ice 37, no zero, the measure passes. Moving on to file item 47, Senator Wajkowski. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 1470 by Senator Wajkowski, an act relating to tobacco. Senator Wajkowski. Mr. President, this bill is intended to be to respond to the outcome of the special session tobacco uh, bills. The, since the fate of the special session is not well known, I'm moving SB 1470 in the event that there's need for um, a follow-up legislation. I urge and I vote. Thank you. Members, debate or discussion on this item? Debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Secretary, please call the roll. Allen. Aye. Anderson. Bates, no. Bell, Berryhill, Block, I. Canella, De Leon, Fuller, Gaines, no. Galgioni, Glazer, I. Hall, Hancock, Hernandez, Hertzberg, I. Hill, I. Wesso, I. Huff, Jackson, I Lada, I Leno, Leva, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, I Monning, I Morlock, No Morell, No Win, Nielsen, No, Pan, I Pavley, I Roth, I Runner. Stone, I, Vidak, Wykowski, I, Wolk, Wolk, I. Call the absent members. Anderson, no. Bell, I, Berryhill, no. Canella, De Leon, I, Fuller, Galjoni, Hall, I, Hancock, I, Hernandez, Huff. No. Leno. Aye. Aye. Win. No. no. Runner. Vidak. Fuller, no. Ayes 25, nose 10, the measure passes. Moving on to file item 48, Senator Leva. Pass on file. File item 49, Senator Wolk. Senator Wolk? Pass on file. File item 50, Senator Block, pass on file. File item 51, Senator Wesso. Secretary, please read. Senate Joint Resolution 22 by Senator Wesso relative to Calexico Westland Port of Entry Project. Senator Wesso. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, I'm honored to uh, present SCR 22, a resolution that urges Congress to appropriate $248 million in funding at as proposed in the President's Fiscal Year 2017 budget to complete Phase 2 of the Calexico West Land Port of Entry reconfigura Reconfiguration and Expansion Project. Uh, border crossings have been shown, reducing wait times in border crossings have been shown to uh, help the economy enormously. 
as much as uh, one to two billion dollars a year in economic growth for our state. This is a, a great investment in helping to reduce border wait times. It's great for the environment. It's great uh, to cut delays. It's good for the economy. It's uh, good to reduce uh, the carbon footprint. And so I uh, urge uh, the Senate and this legislature to uh, bring this money home to our state for this important project. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Wessel. Debate or discussion on this item? Debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, is there objection to using our unanimous roll call? Seeing and hearing none, ayes 37, no zero. The resolution is adopted. Members, we're gonna to move to the consent calendar. Is there any member that would like to remove an item from the consent calendar? Seeing and hearing none, Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 1330, 1474, 1480, 905, 930, 1066, 1105, 1120, 1313, 1473, 1180, 1221, Members, is there objection to utilizing our unanimous roll call for the consent calendar? Seeing and hearing none, ayes 37, no zero. The consent calendar is adopted. Senator Leno, for what purpose do you rise? Under motions and resolutions, please. Without objection. At the author's request, I would like to remove item A31AB801 from the inactive file for purpose of amendment. Such will be the order. Thank you. Senator De Leon, Governor's appointments. Members, this is item 10 and 11. Senator De Leon. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President colleagues. We have Michael uh, Corradino, who is a member of the Acupuncture Board. Uh, he has practiced and taught acupuncture since 1980, 1997. His focus is the protection of consumers of acupuncture. Again, this is Michael uh, Corradino, uh, file item number 10. I respectfully ask for an aye vote. Members, debate or discussion on this item? Debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. Aye, Anderson? Aye. Bates? Aye. Aye, Bell? Aye. Aye, Berryhill? Aye. Block? Aye. Aye, Canella? Aye. Aye, De Leon? Aye, aye Fuller? Aye. aye, Gaines? Aye, aye Galgioni? Aye. aye, Glazer? Aye, aye Hall? I Hancock, I Hernandez, Hertzberg, I Hill, Wesso, I Huff, I Jackson, I Lada, I Leno, I Leva, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, I Monning, I Morlock, I Morrell, I Wynn, I Nilsson. I Pan, I Pavley, I Roth, I Runner, Stone, I Vidak, Wykowski, I Wolk. Wolk I. Call the absent members. Hill I. Anderson, I Barry Hill, I Hernandez, Runner, Vidak. Ayes 37, no zero. The appointment is confirmed. Senator Leon, item 11. Thank you, Madam, uh, Mr. President. Uh, we have file item number 11. We have... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we Madam have Vito Imbasiani. Vito Imbasiani is an MD. He is a PhD, and he is our Secretary of Veteran Affairs. Uh, he left his medical practice with Kaiser in uh, West Los Angeles to become the Secretary of the Department of Veteran Affairs. He has spent a considerable amount of years uh, in the Army, U.S. Army, as a combat surgeon and is dedicated to the well-being of California veterans. He's a very impressive uh, individual. He's a, he's a fine selection to be the Secretary of Veteran Affairs. Again, an MD as well as, well as a PhD, as well as a combat surgeon uh, who has actually been in combat uh, with the U.S. Army. Uh, so with that, I respectfully ask for an I vote for Dr. Vito Imbasiani. Members, the better discussion on this item. Senator Nielsen. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the Senate, I rise in support of the confirmation of Secretary Imbasiani. Uh, our staff were participating in the Rules Committee interview process uh, of Mr. Imbasiani. He is certainly well qualified and shows great sensitivity, particularly with his uh, medical expertise. 
And in the department, he has established a priority of improving the health care delivery and the access of our California veterans. His sensitivity and his expertise and his obvious dedication give me cause to say he's most worthy of our support. I urge and I vote. Thank you, Senator Nielsen. Senator Allen. Uh, colleagues, I, I rise knowing uh, Dr. Imbastiani in a very special way. Uh, Dr. Imbastiani was actually a, a candidate in my primary race when I ran for this august body. And, uh, and I, I just have to say, I have a great deal of respect for, for Vito. He is a, a man of great integrity. He's extraordinarily pleasant. He's very smart. He's got an incredible story that includes some wild moments where he had to literally transfuse his own blood into soldiers on the battlefield in Iraq. And he's, a, he's just a very special guy. And I, I, you know, he became a friend, and I'm really happy to support his, to support him today. Sorry? Thank you, member. Additional debate or discussion on this item. Senator De Leon, would you yeah, like to close? Just a point of clarification, uh, Mr. President. I was asked if Vito Imbasiani is uh, Italian. Um, I'm not sure. I, uh, he may be Irish, but I'm not too <laughs> sure about that. With that, I respectfully ask for an I vote. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. Aye. Anderson? Aye. Aye. Bates? Aye. Bell? Aye. Aye. Berryhill? Aye. Block? Aye. Canella? Aye. Aye. De Leon? Aye. Aye. Fuller? Aye. Gaines? Aye. Galgioni? Aye. Glazer? Aye. Hall? Aye. Aye. Hancock? Hernandez? Hertzberg? Aye. Aye. Hill? Aye. Aye. Wisso? Aye. 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 Huff? Aye. Aye. Jackson? Aye. Aye. Lada? I Leno, I Leva, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, I Monning, I Morlock, I Morrell, I Win, I Nilsson, I Pan, I Pavley, I Roth, I Runner, Stone, I Vidak, Wykowski, I Walk, Walk I. Call the absent members. Hancock. I, Hernandez, Runner, Vida. Ayes 37, no zero. The appointment is confirmed in. Senator uh, Hancock, for what purpose do you rise? I rise for purposes of introduction. Without objection. Um, I'd like to recognize in the gallery members the um, uh, Elaine Holt, who is the sister of Senator Pavley's Chief of Staff, Liz Fenton, and her colleague, Martin Lewis, their fourth grade teachers from Wildwood Elementary School in Piedmont. They're here with their class and are visiting the Capitol and Sutter's Fort and are here to see democracy in action. Welcome to the Capitol. Welcome to your California State Capitol. Members, we are returning to motions and resolutions. It's the time for adjourning memories. Senator, uh, Senator Jackson. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, I rise to adjourn in the memory of Nobel laureate Walter Cohn, who was an extraordinary uh, man who uh, just passed away at the age of 93. He was uh, the founder of the UC Santa Barbara School in, of in, its institute, I should say, for theoretical physics, which is so out of my ken that I'm having trouble even pronouncing it. But he um, was an extraordinary man. In 1998, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his development of the density functional theory. I don't know what that is, but what I can tell you is that his theory is cited in nearly half of the publications on quantum chemistry and his work has been an essential tool in the development of supercomputers. His story is an interesting one as well, as he was born in Vienna in 1923 and was among the children rescued by a kinder transport out of Nazi Germany to England. He traveled then to Canada in, the in 1940, where he attended the University of Toronto, 
he was really quite an extraordinary man who, given this early life experience, still had a very gentle manner and a big smile on his face and was reputed to be uh, the only Nobel laureate who could uh, create an awesome uh, guacamole, which he would uh, serve at every function where he was invited as his contribution. Um, he, of course, um, lived through the Holocaust. His parents were victims of the Holocaust and died uh, in the Nazi concentration camps. He then served in the Canadian infantry during World War II. And his subsequent work to end the nuclear arms race and to have scientists play a part in global efforts for peace. He was among the group at Bell Labs in the early 50s that developed the transistor. And he held posts at the Niels Bohr Institute in Copenhagen, at Carnegie Mellon University, and at UC San Diego before settling in at UCSB. His career was decorated with prestigious awards in addition to his Nobel Prize, including the National Medal of Science and the Oliver Buckley Prize in Solid State Physics. His recent research turned to renewable energy sources besides his work in macular degeneration, an illness his wife suffers. He also worked on solar power and global warming issues. He was an extraordinary mentor and role model to those students who had the opportunity and the honor to be taught by him. He was also a wonderful and very modest man who took the bus to work every day with a brown paper bag filled with his lunch. His modesty was really exceeded only by his brilliance and his loss, I think, will be a great loss and has been uh, suffered uh, with great sadness at UCSB. And I rise uh, to adjourn in his memory and to wish his uh, widow Mara and family the best as they go through this period of bereavement. Thank you, Senator Jackson. Please bring Mr. Khan's name forward so that he may be properly memorialized. Senator Leva. Purpose of announcement. Without objection. Members, please join me in welcoming Liberty Elementary from Ontario in the district. Hello, students. Very glad that you are all here with us today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mr. President. Welcome to your California State Capitol. Members, additional adjourned memories, motions and resolutions. This would be appropriate time for announcements. Senator Hancock. Sub five will meet in room 113 at quarter of 11. Thank you. Senator Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. President. Sub three, the Budget Subcommittee on Health and Human Services will convene in room 4203 at 11 a.m. Thank you. Senator Roth. Thank you, Mr. President. Budget sub four will meet at 1045 in room 2040. Thank you. Senator Block. Subcommittee number one will meet in 3191 at 1045. Thank you. Members, additional announcements? Seeing none, is there no further business? Senator De Leon, the desk is clear. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, have a, a very wonderful, productive subcommittee hearings, uh, meetings today, uh, Thursday. Uh, safe uh, journey back home. Um, we will see each other here. We will reconvene on Monday at 2 p.m. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Members, the Senate will be in recess until 3.30, at which time the adjournment motion will be made. We will reconvene Monday at 2 p.m. Have a great weekend.